you know, at the end of the day, like it's, it's all about people and, mm. and their journey, you know? Cause I come from like that creative kind mm -hmm. of background. It stimulates the same part of my brain that like I get when I create something that I'm stoked on. Yeah. The second I like learn a move or like hit a move. So you've mm -hmm. had 16 years of experience. You're now a professor and like leading yeah. other people. Are you still learning these days or like how? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I still suck at jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time in my life, comfort is not very good for me. Mm -hmm. And even doing this podcast, I feel uncomfortable because yeah. it's like new territory and it's new ground that I've never been in. Mm -hmm. So like, that's kind of been my theme this year is like mm -hmm. getting uncomfortable. We're only here in this life for, you know, a breath, right? A whisper, right? A yeah, whisper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Why not invest your time in people mm. and try to pass on as much knowledge as you can and love as you can. That's it, man. Just walk alongside people. And yeah. Not only walk alongside, I get to choke them out. Too. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you to jujitsu. Right. Keeping me, yeah, keeping me active and training. Um, yeah, I could start with, man, just like where we're at right now, mm. Kanyue. Mm-hmm. That's where I was born and raised, right across Bayview Golf Course. Yeah. Yeah, back in the 70s. See. And uh, crazy. <laughs> but um, I would say like my first introduction to martial arts, let's we'll start there. Mm-hmm. Five years old right down the road at Kanyo District Park. Wow. Yeah, a little program, a little judo program. Oh, sick. Okay. And I was five and had to put on a gi. My mom buzzed my head. <laughs> I hated my haircut. I'd rather have the bowl cut that she had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the gis were stink. <laughs> I just remember those. Those are my memories and just being tossed around. Oh, did they give you guys gis? Yeah. Whoa, interesting. Yeah. Like real thick judo yeah. gis, you know? Yeah. The unbleached versions. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, it was fun. Learned to tumble, roll, a couple like you know throws and stuff when you're that young. But mm-hmm. that was that was like my first introduction to martial mm-hmm. arts. Sick. And then yeah. um, and then I also learned how to swim at the pool over there too. Mm. So, down the road, right? Down the road, yeah, 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 yeah. District pool, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So wow. Driving up here it was like wow, memory lane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. And then. Uh, Shoot, just go from there, just, you know, growing up in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Defending yourself, getting to some scraps when you're young. Yeah. And uh, needing to get some self-defense. Mm. So, been kind of dabbling in martial arts here and there throughout my life. Never really took it seriously um, until, I think I mentioned to you, like right around when I was 10 years old. Mm-hmm. My dad, we packed up everything, sold our house here in Kanyoe. He got a job for the U.S. Trust Territory government mm. and uh, moved us to Saipan yeah. in Micronesia. So nuts. That was pretty nuts. Very I remember. different. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Like the very first um, day we landed, we went to our like rental. And then right outside, kid you not, right outside the window, there was like a full gang fight. Oh. Like, looked like a martial arts movie. Yeah. And like these guys coming together and just throwing kicks. Kung it was fu. crazy. Yeah. I, was like, I remember just watching it going like, whoa, this is nuts. This is what it's like out here. Yeah. And then uh, had my first day at elementary over there, Garapan Elementary. I was doing was doing good. And then uh, I don't know, I think it's because I was American. Mm. Didn't quite mix with yeah. the kids there. So got into some troubles there. And uh Honestly, just defending myself the whole time. Mm. Like, I was like chased with sticks and sprayed with mace. Raw, crazy, it was gnarly. Yeah. And so my parents took me out of the public school, put me in a private school. And then I think because I was like, I would say just PTSD, you know, mm. from that experience, I went into full defensive mode, which actually like I turned into more of the, not the bully, but like, I just didn't want to be messed with. Yeah, yeah. And the only way I could actually do that was to like, start fighting. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. The aggressor almost, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was the aggressor and tried to like, you know, be more like, ah, and um, sure. that got me into trouble. Mm. And then eventually, two years later, um, I had to get shit back. Or flew back to Hawaii and lived with my grandparents <laughs> while my, my family stayed in Saipan yeah. for another year. Dang. Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, through that upbringing and just trying to defend myself and, you know, all this stuff mm-hmm. and try to find the right crowd to fit in, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I grew up, I went to St. Anthony's, so I grew up in private school. Oh, okay. Pretty much my wow. from kindergarten all the way up until I left to Saipan, went, came back to Hawaii Seventh grade went back to, back to oh, okay. um, St. Anthony's and then again got into fights in yeah. St. Anthony's and ended up getting expelled. Wow. That's all boys? Or uh, is it? No, no there's boys, boys and girls. girls. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's uh, private. Private. Yeah. 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 Okay. You got to wear uniforms and stuff. Oh, so you got expelled. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, seventh grade. So mm. then I had to go to Kylo Intermediate, which was nuts. Yeah. Probably even more. Yeah. More crazy, yeah, you know? Yeah, I bet. Like, full fights in Kylo Park and oh, full on. It's just crazy. Pretty much and all public schools here I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, I get pretty gnarly. 
It was pretty gnarly. Yeah. And just um, trying to find the right crowd, you know. Uh, I'm just going, going all over the place. But mm -hmm. in, in, in trying to find the right crowd, I met a couple of friends and uh, got into break dancing. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. that was kind of a cool outlet. Played sports growing up, sure. like baseball, basketball. Yeah. And then I uh, went to Kado High School. And then uh, yeah, I played football there. Still was doing break dancing. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And surfing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, surfing, right. So yeah. you got to move back and just live like Hawaii life as a teenager. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's sick. Did you, so from that age to like now jujitsu? I mean, there's yeah. obviously a bunch of gap, but like what was yeah. like, what got you into jujitsu and training for so yeah. long, right? Because you've been doing it for. 15? Uh, 16 years 16 since years. 2008. So just about there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 What was, um, I think, I, I think I remember you telling mm -hmm. me one time when we sat down, you're like, mm -hmm. uh, kind of UFC or yeah. was it? Yeah. I mean, just being able to see like what was out there now, especially someone who you enjoyed martial arts. Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember watching BJ Penn back in the day yes. and just like all his stuff. I was like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, was that the same kind of like for you then? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. BJ Penn was definitely like the major influence yeah. and his jujitsu and boxing background. Mm. And uh, I was more into like, I did like Filipino martial arts and oh, some yeah. Kaji Kempo and then I did Karate. Sick. And, uh, but I didn't really commit to doing jujitsu like we would mess around you know with mm. friends in the garage and stuff yeah because uh, i knew a couple guys that were training but it wasn't until i moved to northern california and uh i was doing karate out there and i i was we were watching all the fights and everything mm -hmm. and then one of my friends he was my sensei in karate we were watching a ufc fight and we were just like uh, jujitsu is like just dominating yeah. everything. Yeah. And then we're like, yeah, we got to try it, you know? Mm -hmm. So we we're looking, looking on the web and just kind of searching schools around the area. And there was a Hicks and Gracie school in Sacramento. Yeah. Like an hour away from where we live. We were up in more in the foothills or in the mountains. And then uh, we said, okay, let's go do our first class. Sick. And we went there and you know, we were training, like we were training martial arts. So we just figure, go to the first class and mm. we'll be pretty, pretty good. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll be able to like, yeah, you have catch on, you know, you can hold ground a little hold bit. Ground a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no idea, right? <laughs> so we go yeah. in there and I'll, uh, totally like walk into the school and there's a purple belt. So the black belt wasn't there. Mm. Um, it was a purple belt. His name was Chuck. He was 52. And uh, he was teaching class. It was a small class too, mm. maybe like six guys. And uh, I remember just going like, oh, there's no black belt, you know? Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go with the purple belt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking, oh. Thinking like, oh, you know, we yeah. got we got cheated. Yeah, sure. But sure enough, <laughs> when it came time to like uh, roll, he just played with us. Oh, man. Just like, like literally basic stuff. Just yeah. mount you. Yeah. You know, laughing, mm -hmm. just controlling you. You're freaking out, trying Bruh. to escape, move. You don't have no <laughs> idea how to get up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was that day. It was yeah. like, okay. Yeah. This is it. You get that ego checked just Mate. like real quick. So quick. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Was it for you like the second that happened, was it like, oh, I need to like, you know, because I imagine you were probably thinking, oh, how does someone do that to another person? Yeah, and exactly. Then, like, I need to learn this, right? Yeah. 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 Did you feel that way too? I did, for sure. I think, uh, well, like, kind of similar to you, uh, you know, I grew up kind of just wrestling and, like, doing, you know, mm -hmm. backyard stuff with the boys kind of thing. Yeah. I remember when I played sports, we'd have to travel and, like, go to Maui to play yeah, yeah. sports. And so we would stay in the wrestling rooms all the time. Yeah, yeah. And, like, all all my friends, you know, we would just, like, freaking wrestle each other around and like try to tap each other out so that was like you know and no mm -hmm. training nothing yeah, is just yeah. like oh go for it so yeah. you have that little just um experience with like you know just wrestling Grappling. and yeah, grabbing yeah, people yeah, like, yeah yeah so i had a little bit of that before i first started mm -hmm. training but kind of same same story man i walk into the gym um and i think it was with you know justin burbage 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. One, he was like the first one to kind of like take me into uh, oh. Gracie's and Kailua. Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh man, I just got checked by like the smallest guys. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, you kind of walk in like I think I can hold my own. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm in pretty good strong. shape. Like yeah. I've done a little bit of stuff before. Yeah. And just getting like tapped out like ten times in <laughs> yeah. a couple minutes. It's, it's so like demasculating sometimes, yeah. but like also really healthy because yeah. puts you in check and just you mm -hmm. know. It makes you realize, oh yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, you think you can do it, but no, there's there's a lot to learn. Yeah. Um. So yeah, for you, you just mm. rolled with it the first day after you trained, and like yeah. just, from there it was just like end of story. End of story. Yeah. Just like, I mean, I wanted to just quit karate, you know. Mm, yeah. I I kept with karate too because I was actually running the gym in Northern California. Yeah. It was like a martial arts academy. I did like kickboxing muay thai and karate program yeah and then like some yoga and stuff and um so i i was like a enrollment director and i helped coach the kids and stuff like that but with the jujitsu i was like i'm i'm doing this yeah all so, in all in yeah 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 it's cool yeah. i remember you telling me you had to like drive an hour or something right to go train with uh yeah was it uh, Joe Morera, or was oh, that? Yeah, that was a little bit down the road. Down the road, okay. Um, we kept going to Sacramento, mm. um, to the Jiu Jitsu Academy there, and then it was an hour away, and then we bring back whatever we learned, mm -hmm. and then we just like drill, practice, yeah. try to roll with each other, yeah, go back, bring it back, and then we kept doing it. We had a pretty large martial arts studio. It was like six thousand square foot. It's crazy big. And, it's a um, warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, when we were practicing, a lot of the other students, like the adult students were watching, everybody was like, oh, I want to, you know. Mm -hmm. So we would just teach them what we were learning. Mm -hmm. Like already at White Belt, we'd be like, you know, yeah, like, showing, oh, we learned showing this. Moves. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that was super cool because it kind of like got us like, in a sense, that's like birthing us in teaching jujitsu, even yeah. though we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. You know, um, and then we started to build a little group and they were interested in it. And so we, like I said, the first year we would go, mm -hmm. learn some things, come back, do that. Yeah, like, and then teach it. And yeah. teach it. And yeah. there wasn't as much stuff on like YouTube. There's definitely no IG stuff. Mm. Um, so we had some books like the Eddie Bravo's book. Mm. And we'd like look at stuff, look at pictures, mm -hmm. the Twister and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lockdowns. Lockdowns, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we would just try to like, just practice and figure stuff out. Yeah. And um, and then from there, we we're like, okay, our drive is pretty nuts. The, to get there, we had to take this crazy windy road. Um, well, any road there is windy, but that one was pretty crazy. <laughs> and then we started looking for something a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. And there was Lodi, which was 45 minutes, more of like a straight shot from where we lived. And it was Caesar Gracie Academy. Mm. And we went there and that just happened to be Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz's academy. Their gym, yeah. Like their gym. Yeah. And uh, sick. That was pretty sick. Yeah. And we, we trained there for a little bit. And wow, the vibe there was gnarly. Yeah. Those guys are so Some hammered. Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. Just like real tough, you know, like more of the vibe, like super hard because that's like close to Stockton, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. And, um, but very, you know, they're super cool guys. Mm -hmm. It's just the vibe there was like, they were there for business. Business, yeah. yeah. yeah they were yeah. training. It was like, yeah. you know, they were like pull arm mm -hmm. bars and yeah, you know, just couple, go for it. Pops here and there. You know? <laughs> it's so scary, bro. Yeah. Sheesh. So that was like that was like you know the beginning years. Mm -hmm. um, we got introduced. So, anyways, we kept training. Same thing. We learn. Go back to the, the martial arts academy. Train, and then um, one guy heard about us training. He was a purple belt from Sacramento and he just happened, he was a lawyer, he just happened to be, his name was Patrick. He just happened to be in Jackson for work. And he stopped by the academy and started talking about jujitsu and mm -hmm. we're like, oh yeah, we just started our journey, da da da. And he's like, hey, I'm, I'm here like like three times, you know, two to three times a week. He's like, I wanna just come over here and just roll with you guys and show you some stuff. So he was, a, he, that was cool. Like we were, we, were, we had him. Yeah. yeah. And he was showing stuff and he was such a higher level. Yeah. And um, 
And then we go, you know, so we were getting all these sources of training. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of like that, the beginning of like cross training, you know, mm. just learning different things from everybody. Yeah, everyone has other stuff to kind of like offer, right? Or their styles and stuff. Yeah. Or just new knowledge. I, that's why I like yeah. learning from, you know, or just getting new bodies and new people. Mm -hmm. You learn so much and you pick up so much more than just kind of staying in one place. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So that's cool. So you guys had these other kind of people to help guide on like your guys early journey too right yeah cool so he's he stuck with you guys he stuck with us for a while all the way till we got our brown belts oh yeah, wow he just kept coming in coming in yeah so yeah he was definitely a huge part of our growth process mm -hmm. and um and then there's one more guy i gotta give a shout out to manny rocha mm. and uh manny was tough as nails he was like mma fighter you know taekwondo black belt and he somehow stumbled into this to the academy he was a blue belt but like you know like a sure sandbagging blue belt. yeah yeah yeah, of course <laughs> like he was tapping black belts out in comps oh, in nogi oh, comps man. yeah and uh now he owns his own academy mm. um and he's doing really well it's out in lodi california mm. he's killing it and he competes and yeah he's he's a, it's amazing he's a big inspiration too mm. of what he has built yeah. Like with the kids program, adults program, competition team. Mm. Um, because I remember him as a blue belt and asking him like, oh, what's your goal? Like, what do you want to do for, you know, yeah. in, in jujitsu? Compete or what? He's like, yeah, competition, but I want to open up my own academy. Mm. And like back then it's like, oh, wow, that's cool so far. You know? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And, yeah. and now it's like, wow. He's just doing it. He's doing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, just like you. I yeah, mean, <laughs> it's, it's, like I, it's yeah. crazy. I never thought I would be doing it, you know? Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty sick. I mean, that was basically what the whole, we centered the film around was yeah. just like your kind of um, philosophy on, mm -hmm. on coaching. Yeah. Um, and I think it was tough because I remember when I, when I first sat down with you to record your voiceover, yeah. we had like a whole spread of like topics that were like, important to us about about jujitsu and about your life yeah um and then and as that was my job to kind of like pick and choose what was like kind of the best out of that mm -hmm. and everything was great hence like being here we can talk about all the other stuff but the yeah. thing that stuck was like what you said about coaching what you yeah. said about like leading people and, and just like pouring life into mm -hmm. people yeah. um was there so you became a coach here mm -hmm. A professor like you got your black belt mm -hmm. here on the island mm -hmm. um and then was that always the goal for you like obviously like mm -hmm. sharing knowledge or, or just like you know yeah. as a professor yeah definitely um i always enjoyed teaching and passing stuff that i learned on i mean even from way back you know when mm -hmm. i started um just to see the the aha moment yeah. in people you yeah. know yeah yeah and to see the stoke in them and and that whatever would get them curious about jujitsu because mm -hmm. i just knew how empowering it was yeah and how it's, it's amazing you yeah. know yeah, yeah yeah and um so i always i always wanted to like just keep showing stuff and and encouraging people to mm. start jujitsu and then help them along the way um i started coaching more when i was a purple belt and uh we had a kids program and then also adults and so I would coach there in Northern California through Brown Belt. And then I left Northern California as a Brown Belt. And I took, like, when I moved, I didn't have an academy to train at. Mm -hmm. And I literally took, like, a year off because we were traveling, going to, we had to move. We moved to Southern California. And then we went to the Philippines for, like, two months mm. um, until I made my way back home to Hawaii. Um, but during that time... Like I would train like cousins yeah. in the garage yeah. just to keep keep training. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go a di visit different academies to train at, drop in. Um, when I was in the Philippines, I, I dropped into a, a MMA academy there that had a no gi jiu-jitsu thing mm -hmm. and ended up coaching there no, <laughs> because see. like they were like white white belts and I think that the highest ranker was a blue belt. Oh, uh, yeah. And so I just, you know, just showed some stuff there, sure. which was, I love that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then when I moved back to Hawaii, um, I got hooked up with Island Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. met Professor Jay, shout out to Professor Jay. Yep. Uh, and my son, 
who was also training already, I was looking for him to get in mm. to, to continue training. So my son Aiden, my oldest, he went to Island Jiu-Jitsu, went there, watched them, watched how all the coaches were with the kids. And I was like, wow, this, this is such a vibe, you know, this place. Mm -hmm. So I started going too. And then immediately it was like, this is family. Mm -hmm. like, this is where yeah. I want to train. Yeah. And uh, he welcomed me, open arms. I was a brown belt at the time. Um, and then I just trained, trained under him. I just wanted to learn from him mm -hmm. and, and the community there, grow friendships, which has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Everybody there is so supportive and awesome school. Yeah. Uh, and then through that, I was like helping out with the kids' classes with him. And, you know, you teach kids, you learn so much yeah. too. So yeah, yeah. that was always a, a great uh, thing for me. Yeah. And then from there, there was an opening for a 6 a.m. class. They needed a coach. And so I, I took on that 6 a.m. coaching role. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the, 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 those the are, beginning part. Yeah, that was yeah. like. Those are fun too. So fun. I've done, I've stopped in at the 6 a.m.s at Island and they're like, yeah, yeah good guys over there. For yeah. For sure. Um, and then Sojourn. Yeah. So, so um, after coaching for two years at the 6 a.m. and growing, you know, growing the community there, COVID happened. Mm. And then it was like, and I also got my black belt during COVID. Oh, during, during COVID? Yeah, 2020. Oh, wow. And so a lot of people weren't training during yeah. COVID, yeah? Yeah. And we kept training because I had mats at the house and Kaha, you know, Kaha, mm -hmm. Kaha would come. Yeah. Yeah. My kids and, and a couple other people would come here and there. Yeah. And we just trained at the house. Well, the spot that Sojourn's in right now was a CrossFit studio. Mm -hmm. And CrossFit was like done. Like pretty much nobody was showing up to do that. Sure. So we boarded up the windows. Yeah. And uh, we put the home mats down. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just, I just invited up like maybe like five people or Sick. whatever whoever could show up yeah and we just kept training during that time sick yeah so during that time uh needle boxing also um started giving us private lessons mm. so shane was boxing out in uh waipahu yeah and then he was like talking with needle and he was like i want to open up something else down you know that side yeah and so that's kind of how it all birthed. Oh, huh, okay. Yeah, so we were, we were boxing, and then after that, we'd set the mats up, we'd, we'd mm -hmm. roll, hmm. and uh, then just came the opportunity for Nito to open up his academy there in Kahala. Yeah. And part of that was having Sojourn in the so, time, in the off hours. So cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In between. In between, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so I was like, yeah, I'll take it. You know, let's, let's do this. So we got, we bought the mats. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much, that's the Epic. birthing of it. Yeah. yeah. 2020. And then now it's like three years later. We so, just celebrated three years. Yeah. Congratulations to that, by the way. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, That's crazy. I think even what I've noticed too, because I've only been training, I just made a year, I think in like Not. My, my first year in December. No. Yeah. is when I first started. Are you so good? No, no, no. Shout that's, out. Because of you that guys. That sucks, bro. <laughs> Bro, I suck at jujitsu. <laughs> bro, no, no, no. I, 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 bro, but you know what's crazy? Even about that, thinking about like how you said you only had books back then, yeah. right? Like, bro, we have so much like instructionals oh. and yeah. YouTube and Instagram nowadays to like learn so quickly. Yeah. That oh, bro, it's nuts. For for me, I just like I took it. And I was like, oh my god, like I got obsessed yeah. really quick. But yeah. um, like the one thing I noticed when I first started too was just how welcoming the community mm -hmm. like jujitsu i mean just like people who train like yeah e like you met you know shane and like all these people mm -hmm. who box and like you just oh ah oh shit oh shit water flow water flow water flow <laughs> be like water <laughs> the yerbs you have a towel right the there? yerbs oh my goodness i spilt my yerbs on my laptop oh you guys saw it that's, hopefully it's, that's that's what happens I know. You gotta bring some excitement. To I got the too excited. Yeah, is what me it too. Is. <laughs> I got excited. Yeah. I, would, nah. I would grab something, but there's no paper. Oh, there he there is. There we go. Thank the you, Tate. Magician, oh, Tate. Sorry. I think I, I think it's fine, as long as it's not inside the. Yeah, we're chilling. Sponsored by your. Sponsored by your. Sponsored yerbs. by your. <laughs> this is a true 
So, True yerba laptop now. It's just a quick commercial break for this <laughs> yeah. um, amazing drink here. Oh, we roll content. <laughs> Organic yerba mate. Oh, no. Please be okay. I think it's fine. Oh, try to wipe the back. Yeah. yeah. Nah, as long as it doesn't get in the, the in the guts of it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I might actually I just shut this down anyway, just in case. Should I, I do that? I don't think it... Um, poured into it yeah. no oh, yeah, it didn't it was just kind of pretty surface level but yeah we'll keep it sorry about that everybody we're yeah. gonna we're gonna keep that in because that was a fun little yeah adventure. that's raw man right that's real <laughs> um yeah, i think you got flustered when i said you i so know good at jujitsu yeah yeah i took it a little too <laughs> too excited <laughs> i was like yes give me more validation <laughs> <laughs> um shoot i forget what we were even talking about um what were we talking about? Community. Community. Yes. yes. Community. Yes. Cheers to community. Cheers to community. <laughs> Bringing together just awesome people. Some of my, I mean, like, yeah, nowadays it's like meet some of the best people through through jujitsu and just like connect. Yeah, facts. Literally. 100%. Proof right here. Mm -hmm. Meeting you is so sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like yeah. how welcoming. It was very... I remember, do you remember like your first day show, like stepping on a mat and just like, I was always pretty a shy kid and oh, stuff. So dude, like, yeah, that was like the hardest, the hardest thing for me was just to like go. Yeah. Showing and, up. Like show up. Yeah. And then yeah. being in a place where it's like, you walk in, it's like the lion's den, you know? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, oh, right. Everybody's kind of eyeing you out and you're like, oh, shoot, I'm going to get work, you know? Kinda, yeah. Even, even after your first day, like that, those first initial, like that first month or two. Sure. You yeah. Know? But yeah. yeah, you just get that. I had butterflies like every time driving down to the to the academy yeah. to train. Um, so and I think that's that's pretty much I think it was just ingrained in me so much that that's why I the environment, the culture that I have a vision for Sojourn mm -hmm. has always been just that welcoming and warm fun environment it's totally completely different than what you would think jujitsu is yeah yeah that's okay that's just what i want mm -hmm. you know and um i think also because you know i come from a customer service background sure. and yeah you know was a pastor and and like knows yeah. you know just like a people person yeah like i just want people to be safe mm. and people to feel um included and honestly love you know mm -hmm. like feel that a lot of spirit feel welcomed mm -hmm. i think that's important in anything oh yeah you know anywhere yeah. you go yeah. so and i'm like that anywhere so why not why change in jujitsu jiu environment mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah back rewinding there because mm -hmm. i know that's part of also it didn't make the cut but um mm -hmm. we spoke about how you like you said you were a pastor before mm -hmm. you have a kind of history there, but um, treating like your academy and teaching people as kind of like your ministry in a sense, yeah. right? Because yeah. um, you're 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 leading people. You're kind of like showing the way of like yeah. certain, you know, it's 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 a martial art, but it's also just like it's lifestyle lessons there. Yes, just like life lessons, just values and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how did that play into? I mean, obviously, how yeah. you coach and treat people now. Like, is yeah. there a overlap between, you know, having mm -hmm. a past, past, like being a pastor and then, yeah, you know, coaching now? Yeah, I would say definitely. Um, a large part in Bible college was, uh, in the pastoral track, was leadership. Mm. So a lot of leadership classes and courses, um, books, mentorship. You know, I was mentored by Pastor Wayne, a lot of his pastors. And, um, and you just go through so much with people, mm -hmm. you know, and you begin to be able to like read people or sense how they're feeling, you know, mm. uh, in a sense more just like, you know, if something's troubling somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I just don't let that slide, mm. you know, mm -hmm. cause Jiu Jitsu is important, but if somebody's struggling with something, then. I, you know, I need to have some time with them to like sit down or just like address or just check in on them. Yeah. I feel that's super important. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would be part of my teaching style. 
yeah. you know, and yeah, just yeah. just from from the years of doing you know the pastoral ministry and. I got to do a lot of things. I was grateful to, you know, I was a family's pastor, so I worked with a lot of families, worked with all the kids, um, and you know, I had to do funerals, do weddings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's, it's all about people and, mm. and their journey, you know? Yes. So, so when they come into the space, you know, each person matters. It's, I want them, number one, to feel welcome, two, like, you know, what, what are you here for? Obviously to learn jujitsu, mm -hmm. but you know, what's your goals for, for learning? You know, you yeah. just want to like try it out. You want self-defense, you want to compete. Um, you're always curious. Those are the things that I like to know about each person. Mm -hmm. And then that way when I'm teaching or coaching, I can, you know, kind of bring that out of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like Kekoa, you know, when he started, it was like, he didn't know anything like shrimping and all that stuff, right? And now, mm -hmm. gosh, he's amazing. Now. Oh, dude. He's incredible. Yeah. yeah. He's freaking insane. Like nuts. Young uh, kid, too. Yeah. Yeah. He's 18. 18. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that'll humble anyone really quick. You just like have a young kid tune you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. I remember, I remember my first time kind of walking into Sojourn 2. Mm -hmm. And exactly like you said, man, it, it felt like that just, welcoming mm -hmm. good vibe yeah um you know and i remember i think it was summer who brought me in yeah for the first time yeah and you know i just connected with you guys i like i didn't train there before but i, I think at like the end of the day like we were just talking story mm -hmm. and she was like jason you just bring in the coolest people like all the time like you have you know like josh and like other you know kind of yeah. cool people that come through yeah not saying i'm cool or anything you're cool but, dude no no, no. <laughs> no. but like the idea yeah. was like and it was just like what what's that factor that mm -hmm. like just brings such a good you know community and like mm -hmm. vibe and i was like oh it's, yeah. it's you like yeah. it's like the kind of community you've cultivated and the environment mm -hmm. that you've made like yeah it's a very welcome like a, a warm place to just kind of like even like I said, when I first started, I was kind of really anxious every time I, you know, showed up to a mat or just show up to the gym. Yeah. And so I was nervous all the time because you know, I never trained anything before. Yeah. You know, I was kind of a little scared because my previous experiences were like, it's always kind of like muscly and like, yeah. you know, guys that are just like wanting to tear your head off sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. to just get the courage to just show up and walk in was like kind mm -hmm. of a little, it was a little stressful, but yeah. Yeah, when I showed up to Sojourn, it was like, bro, oh, this is sick. There's good people here. Like nobody's mm -hmm. trying to like hurt each other and yeah. like, you know, swing their freaking bottles around and yeah. like try to make like, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was just a good, a good, good vibe. And so like the environment yeah. that you created was so solid. Yeah. Um I yeah. think I think jujitsu as a art form, mm -hmm. um, it has many like different sides to it. Yeah, because we we we've talked about before how it can be this really aggressive and uh, you know like explosive like kind of dangerous thing like people get hurt I've been hurt a bunch of times you yeah. probably hurt yourself yeah. a ton of times yeah but it's also at the same time very gentle like yeah. it, it can be this artistic uh, you know just like expression of mm -hmm. the body yeah um, we talk about like oh how it's a chess match. Mm -hmm. and like yeah. it's so cerebral it's not just like brute force and strength all the time yeah um what are your thoughts on like just like as an art form because mm -hmm. obviously there's so many different aspects of jujitsu but yeah um what sticks out to you like what is it that you mm -hmm. like the most about about jujitsu about jujitsu yeah yeah i mean i like all facets of jujitsu uh but i think for me it's a lot of the technique Mm. Uh, the art of the technique and and getting things precise when you're learning um, the little details. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's like as an artist, just like the little shadowing or, you yeah. know, just like colors and stuff like, like those things I, it's, it's, I really like more of that, that flow style, mm. you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's also, you have to be aligned with, you know, also having the pressure and the, the grindy style yeah. too. So yeah, yeah. it's um 
it's that mix of both yes. worlds that all combine together mm -hmm. to make it beautiful. And that's what I feel about jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. That like, I like how you talked about that like detail oriented, especially as mm -hmm. like, I feel like that's where it becomes artistic in a yeah. sense because the way you can execute moves is a lot like a style of like art or like just yeah. a style that someone, I mean, cause I come from like that creative kind mm -hmm. of background. Yeah. It stimulates the same part of my brain that like I get when I, you know, create something that I'm stoked on. Yeah. The second I like learn a move or like hit a move and yeah. um, it's never always the same, mm -hmm. you know, like circumstances. Yeah. It's always different somehow. Yeah. And Again, like I said, it's a chess match, right? You're kind of like competing against someone else to see who's whose moves, yeah, counter moves that, counter move this, yeah. all towards like a tangible winning moment of yeah. like yeah, someone tapping or like yeah. you know winning by po points or something. But yeah. um, that like I think that feeling for me is like what I like the most about it is mm. there's not a lot of things that give that sense of win or like gratification sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like jujitsu, it has that kind of, mm -hmm. that hit where it's like, oh yeah, you can yeah. kind of like submit someone and make them, you know, tap out or something. Yeah. Um, but back to like the creative side of that, it's never the same yeah. situations ever. Yeah. Like surfing. Yeah. Like Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's always going to be a different mm -hmm. like angle or movement that you have to like really be in the moment. Mm hmm and I think that's another thing I love about it too. It's you're just so in the moment when you're rolling. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. just, every move matters and how we move our body and one little mistake, especially against a game player or somebody yeah. who's more, you know, knowledgeable, it can mean everything. Yeah. And so that's, that's what drives me to keep learning and just keep falling in love with it. You know, you just never, like you never feel like you've, learned enough you're done even yeah. on the fundamentals you're like oh i could you know position this way mm -hmm. you know inside control and uh, there's so much to learn it's crazy mm -hmm. never yeah. finished never yeah always a student yeah is that um Definitely. yeah is that re prevalent in your brain like that student mm -hmm. mindset still because i mean yeah. still you've mm -hmm. had 16 years of experience you're now a professor and like leading yeah. other people yeah but are you still learning these days or like how absolutely yeah yeah yep I've, I still suck at jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, by the way. But no, I, 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 I'm just, yeah. I learn every day, honestly. Mm. Like teaching, I'm learning. Um, I love it when we have all the, you know, all our guest coaches come yeah, through. Yeah. Like Ty, dude, Ty's amazing. Yeah. You know, speaking of layers, like that's how he teaches. Like he teaches in like layers, and yeah. and um, it's it's a beautiful thing to learn from other styles or other coaches mm -hmm. you know myself too so i i it's yeah it's yeah always always a student like Sick. yeah yeah i think that's the one thing i love about jiu-jitsu is not not really the competitive side of things it's more of just the constant learning mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. kaizen constant never-ending improvement yeah you yeah, know yeah, and yeah. just like always always learning you yeah. know yeah that and that's life too yes there I, that's the yeah that's where I was like, with your, <laughs> with your film, I had so much ambition. I was like, oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. jujitsu is doing so much for me. And like, mm -hmm. it's giving me a new dimension to my life. So I was yeah. like, your philosophy on, on coaching and just like how you see jujitsu also was mm -hmm. super inspiring. But also I had this idea of like, man, how do we, uh, you know, obviously there's so much overlap life lessons of like mm -hmm. jujitsu mm -hmm. and creating. And also like, again, like you said, life. Mm -hmm. like it was ambitious of me. I was like, oh man, how am I going to do all of that yeah. through voiceover? But I'm glad we get to talk about it now. Cause again, yeah. like yeah. the constant learning mm -hmm. and the idea of like never finish, like you've got to apply that to so like everything in life. Everything. I yeah. think, and yeah. it's inspiring to see like, okay, mm -hmm. you've been doing it for as long as you have. Mm -hmm. I am excited mm -hmm. that, Hopefully my jujitsu journey looks the same. I'm just like, oh man, like I'll just keep learning and like oh, yeah. keep kind of improving. But 
even Definitely. when it comes to like my work and your work too, mm -hmm. you should see it that way. It's like, yeah, always improving, yeah. always learning. If you think that you know everything, like yeah. that's probably a bad place to be because there's no space to grow. There's no space right. to evolve and improve. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just cool stuff. Like the life yeah. lessons that obviously like jujitsu has. Mm -hmm. um, has there been moments where, I mean, not without going, I mean, we don't have to talk about it, but yeah. like where it's uh, like challenges, obviously like mm -hmm. jujitsu is not fun in games all the time. Right, right. It's most of the time you're getting smashed and it's kind of shitty situations and yeah. um, you have to get comfortable with being in a bad place. Mm -hmm. Um what are your thoughts on like, yeah, like, do you kind of relate that to, to life at all too? Or just like being, um, you know, what I want to try to say, like when shit gets hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's what it's taught me. Like, yeah. just, okay, just kind of write it out. Yeah. 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 It definitely, yeah. <clears throat> Jiu-jitsu -jiu has definitely saved my life. As mm. cliche, as, cliche as that sounds, everybody you know, says that, yeah. and it's true. I mean, because when people say that, there is meaning behind that, and each person has their story of why jujitsu saved their life um, through dark times. I had a dark season, and, you know, if it wasn't for something, an outlet, and a passion to focus on, um, I don't, I'm not too sure where I would be. Mm -hmm. And... So there's that aspect and the community aspect of it. Also, just the mental fortitude yeah. it teaches you. Yeah. And, and you don't really know that you're learning the mental fortitude when you're training, but it really does apply in life. Yeah. Where, yeah. I mean, eventually you're going to tap out, but you're, you're going to fight to yeah. the death yeah. before you tap out, yeah. right? Yeah. And so yeah. it just um, gives me that that mindset to not tap out when mm. things are hard mm -hmm. and that there's always a way. Yeah. Like I've been put in some pretty, you know, difficult situations and jujitsu, the first thing that comes to my mind is there's always a way out. Yeah. There's a counter to this counter. Mm. There's, there's a way that I can solve this problem because mm. jujitsu is problem solving. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Like real time. So yeah, it has applied so much into my life that, it has allowed me to keep moving forward. And and now it's like, man, I'm just so happy I didn't tap out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because if, you, if you'd given up, yeah, you wouldn't get to where you are. You yeah, know? exactly. That's and even like in, in, and even in just continuing to train, yeah. you know, like as yeah. I, I had kids and, you know, moving and all this stuff, it, it would have been easy for me to just say, ah, that was fun, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But to just keep going. I never really, a black belt was always something that we always strive for. Yeah. But it wasn't the belt. It was just wanting to continue to learn. Yes. And so I always just made a way to do it. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. to figure out, even if it was just like, okay, once a week or twice a week this in this season, I'll just do that. Mm -hmm. Just to keep it keep in my going. life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good goal to have. I mean, like, because mm -hmm. even as you kind of continue like jujitsu you're always gonna kind of come through these roadblocks like yeah. i can imagine how many times you've been injured <laughs> like Dude, yeah. throughout your journey but like mm -hmm. even for me like my first year i feel like i popped my ankle out like three times each side yeah and like just stuff that just wants to just uh slow you down for one mm -hmm. um where you kind of have to allow it because you know yeah. it's again it just it adds more of a deeper I think for me, like life lessons of like, yeah, when stuff hits the fan, yeah, when it gets hard, yeah, just keep going for yeah. one. And like mm -hmm. the goal is just to keep going. Like as long yeah. as I can, like it's not to really win. You don't win mm -hmm. at jujitsu if you just de devote your like life to it. Yeah, there's no winning. Obviously, yeah. you get it from like competitions and stuff. But yeah. like if you're, you know, your goal is just like to keep training. Like yeah. you're just trying to stay. Mm -hmm. healthy and like you know yeah. just be in the right headspace to continue to learn and continue to train it's such a cool yeah just like again like anything else in life it's mm -hmm. like how you how you see success in any area mm -hmm. like depending on what you want obviously but um just the idea of like to keep going 
Yeah. Like, that's how I see like film and stuff. Like I don't have yeah. like. How has it helped you, Jujutsu, with film? It's like, right. I think for me, I relate it to the like the idea that like we were just talking about how mm -hmm. I don't have like these big lofty goals for filmmaking. Like it'd be mm -hmm. cool to get all the awards and cool things that you hear about, but yeah. I genuinely have like a love for film. Yeah, and I found that same thing in like jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, I've competed a couple of times and, you yeah. know, play second, third, whatever. Yeah. So I have a goal. I was like, oh, yeah, it'd feel cool, cool to get gold. But um, the idea of like, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to be done with this thing that's brought me so like another mm -hmm. dimension to my life. Yeah. Like, it's like surfing, right? Yeah. How do you win surfing? Like, yeah. no, you just, you just do it because you love it. Yeah, exactly. And I feel that same way with jujitsu. So yeah, I'm glad that, you know, I got introduced to it and I feel like, Mm -hmm. I feel like it filled a place that I was lacking mm. in my life in a sense mm -hmm. of um, it's given me a lot of confidence. Yeah. Not in like a macho type of way, right. but yeah. how we were talking about mm -hmm. if you're in this bad situation, like where yeah. I've, you know, sometimes you got to tap out, Yeah. but if you can kind of like sit with it and mm -hmm. you think clearly and you accept the situation, then you know what to do and like you learn how to get out of it. Um, Mm -hmm. that's giving me confidence yeah with like everything in life man like yeah. so stuff that comes my way i'm like yeah i can handle like yeah. I, I can handle like yeah. i've done it builds that like you said mental fortitude yeah. right yeah um so i think oh man i could go all day about like just yeah. the parallels i know because you're just under pressure you know yeah like yeah just being stuck in side control with some grindy <laughs> you know pressure Pass big like, boys or just big, big boy, guys just yeah like shoulder in your jaw and like can't go anywhere you yeah know? yeah that's that's life sometimes for sure you know oh yeah and you gotta you gotta sit with it like yeah sometimes I mean, we talked about this the last time we spoke but like there's points where you have to accept no yeah. matter like where you're at yeah and that, that's part of getting like, and yeah. that's where you're at like it is what it mm -hmm. is so like life is you gotta it is what it is. So, Dude, that's, yeah. yeah, it's the same with jujitsu. And yeah, yeah. Is there any? I mean, moments. I guess that, mm -hmm. like you competed before, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, what was that for you? How was? Yeah. Was competition always like a big kind of check it, for you, or it was like more? It was a check for me to see like where I was, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, to just see if I was like competent in my skill and my belt rank yeah sure and also curiosity yeah you know yeah um but i don't know it kind of sucks sometimes <laughs> competing <laughs> like just the, yeah. the anxiety well up yeah and, and and all that and um like yeah. same same thing for you i think the i got second at american cup and mm. like nothing big and uh i mean i love it though it, yeah. it's like it's a weird thing it's fun to be out there but Honestly, I'd, I'd rather coach. Mm, mm -hmm. Like I, I find more joy in coaching, but yeah, mm. co competition's fun. Yeah. I, I still got to compete at black belt. I think you uh, should. Yeah. Just send it. Cause I, yeah. We, you talked about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about like, uh, getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Like that, like feeling mm -hmm. again, like I, I was like, yeah. I don't have a lot of things in my life that give me that, like true you know like for yeah. a lot of people i bet it's the same that give you that feeling of like anxiety and and like excitement yeah. and um thinking that you're ready but then when the moment comes it's like oh you're definitely like your yeah. nerves are going yeah and you have to just like be there yeah there's not a lot of things that mm -hmm. i feel do that for for people in life yeah um you're and right. i think that's healthy yeah right definitely yeah yeah yeah, it's he it's healthy to be humbled. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and then go through that process. Yeah, yeah, of of just welling up with anxiety and yeah, and fighting your mind and trying to calm yourself down and yeah, be in the moment. Yeah, it's the idea of like self mastery in a sense of like if yeah. you can go through that like those feelings and those emotions and then mm -hmm. come out on the other end. Yeah, then you understand like oh even when those feelings come up in other places you just yeah. gotta kind of like you just gotta do it. Yeah, you just gotta push through. Dude, you're inspiring me. I'm gonna no, no, no. I'm gonna sign up. <laughs> yeah, go compete. Let's, uh, let's do there. something. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you? So, I mean, these days, obviously, coaching is like your main kind of focus. Mm -hmm. 
with Sojourn. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any other, like what's kind of like pulling you towards the future? What's like, mm-hmm. are you excited for? For the future. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu with, yeah. I mean, how is it? Yeah. Pulling mm-hmm. you, you're still, you do it every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's something, that's what I wanted the layers whole series to focus on. It's like, yeah. why do people yeah. do all this awesome stuff and incredible things mm-hmm. that they do? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What's your, mm. what's, what's my, your what's reason? My your reason, my, yeah. my purpose to pull. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, it. And, you know, talked, talked about it before, but introducing people to jujitsu and like touching lives through jujitsu mm-hmm. mm-hmm. by coaching, um, helping people who want to compete, like Kekoa, like to just be able to like provide an environment mm-hmm. where they can do that. That's mm-hmm. why I'm stoked that we're able to like open up full time mm-hmm. because then, you know, there's more, more opportunities for training yeah. that's that's what i'm excited about yeah i have a bunch of different classes um my my ultimate goal with sojourn is has nothing to do with me it has mm. everything to do with creating an environment mm. and in that environment the people in that environment it's like home and that they can train mm-hmm. and grow. Yeah. And I just want to see that flourish. I just want to just epic. I I I honestly I mean I love training every day yeah. and I'll be there every day. But I I would love to just like sit back and just watch yeah. everyone. Yeah. And and I feel like having like a schedule that's just like there's there's no Field. there's no yeah. outs like oh you know oh, right now it's like oh it's 12:30 I can't make it. Sure, like, sure. You know, six AM, seven PM, whatever we have. Mm-hmm. Like there's always gonna be opportunity to train and, and I'm I'm excited to build a community mm. of jujitsu mm-hmm. for people who have yet to even start jujitsu. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah and yeah. I think that's what excites me because I've seen it, you know, and I've yeah. been a part of it. Yeah. And in the past three years we've been able to create that environment. For sure. And yeah, that's I'm I'm excited. Yeah. So, hopefully, more more film projects. Dude, I think that'd be, that'd be sick. sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. I was uh, I was just stoked that we got to make what we made, and with the yeah. kind of guy, I guess like the guidelines that we gave ourselves in terms of like mm-hmm. when I approached you to do the film, it was just like, oh, you want to make something sick together? Yeah. And you know, I think we started with the idea of um, wanting to share your story yeah. a bit. Yeah. It took it took me a long time. Sorry, I'm just like reflecting because like yeah, no. man, to make your film, it was a fun process too. Like it was for me the idea of like merging two passions. Yeah. That I just got to like, you know, because jujitsu is new for me, but mm-hmm. I've been doing film for a while. Yeah. And to be able to like kind of bring those two together yeah. was very like exciting for me. And also stoked. Yeah, yeah I was just happy to kind of like have, you know you guys and the students and just that space to like just go off and create and then yeah obviously sharing your your stories and your philosophy that just like took it to the next level um but you did amazing man yeah thank you no no no. it was it was all you too i think uh when we first kind of like sat down to talk about your message Mm -hmm. and what we wanted to share it was i was like kind of it was a daunting task because mm-hmm. I was like, I, I kind of mentioned it earlier. I was like, oh, there's a lot we could yeah. do with this and relating it to just uh, like something poetic for the film. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you had a line that was like, you want to create that environment to pull the potential out of people. There you go. Dude, that was uh, yeah. freaking, I heard that. I was like, okay, that's the like the main one right there. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy that you, you chose that. It was sick. And it, yeah. it was, again, I think that just fully represents who you are. Yeah. Ho- hopefully. I mean, I hope oh, it did you justice it a does little bit. 100%. Yeah. Just, just that alone is is like, you know, my DNA. And mm-hmm. it's, um, yeah. Yeah. So sick. Um, and it was, uh, it was kind of a long time coming. I think we filmed yeah. in like June of last year. 
Yeah. And then like months go by and it's like, oh yeah, can I? We had all kinds of ideas. I like know, fire yeah. Fire pit, surfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wanted to yeah. like do these outdoor scenes. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, we need, I need more to make mm -hmm. this story better is right. like the thought that I had. Yeah. And I don't know what moment it was that I was just like, I, I was probably going through everything we had again. Yeah. Um, but I came to this kind of like realization. I was like, man, yeah. we have everything we need to make it sick. Yeah. And don't. I had to kind of like just quiet my head a little bit to be mm -hmm. like, wow, the, the, the bone's already there. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, we could go and do a bunch of supplemental stuff that would maybe like add yeah. to it. But I was like, man, it's there already. Yeah. I had to get out of the way and just like, yeah, let it kind of just come out and just let it shine. Because I think I was just avoiding the whole yeah. time, just like sitting down to, yeah. to like edit it, honestly. Yeah. Because I had the feeling, I was just like, yeah, there's so much good stuff. Mm -hmm. And it gave me like, like creation anxiety. I don't know if that's even a thing, but where you just feel like you have yeah. too much and you can't like do it justice. Yeah. I felt that with this one. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it took like oh, a sorry, few months. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, don't be sorry. You, you said a lot of good stuff. It was just, yeah. it was me. It was the battle in my head. And wow, that's cool. Yeah. It, that's another lesson too. Yeah. I was just like, man, there's so much I need to like, sometimes I just got to get out of the way of myself. Bro, that's like jujitsu <laughs> right there. Like yeah, right? less is more, you know, like yes. fundamentals. Yo, you actually. Know, you're trying to like, Get all into you know the fancy fancy guards and everything yes. when it's just like oh close guard dude close guard hold yeah. your head down control oh, the posture I uh my professor in Kailua Jason yeah. Isagiri he's the man oh man he's so scary to roll with because I mean he's not fancy you know but everything he does is like to the highest like expression of that like move yeah. and how you can do it and but he just like. Oh yeah. The second I think I'm getting better, like even other people, when I watch, he just executes to the highest yeah. of that simple move, the fundamental yeah. Oh, yeah. arm bars, loop chokes. His loop chokes are. He insane. just yeah yeah he just gets it, and it's like yeah that's a pure testament to like simple is better, like mm -hmm. less is more sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, that's absolutely. that's life, man. <laughs> like yeah. sometimes you know like you just gotta keep it simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Which you did and. Yeah, it came out amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All, all thanks to you, bro. The message and everything. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad. I'm glad we got to to make that together. Yeah, me um, too, man. Yeah, is there? Oh man, I feel like we could go anywhere with this. I, I kind of yeah. the topics I had were mostly around like those life lessons. Mm. Is there any other? I mean, like thoughts that you have around like jujitsu with life lessons? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. The pressure one was the biggest one for me, like that mm -hmm. get uncomfortable part. Cause like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can be in the worst situations mm -hmm. and just still come out or, yeah. or some, or, or even, how about this? Um, cause a lot of the time in my life, like comfort is not very good for me. Mm -hmm. And even doing this podcast, I feel uncomfortable because yeah. it's like new territory and it's new ground that I've never been in. Mm -hmm. So like, that's kind of been my theme this year is like mm -hmm. getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, do you relate to that in the sense of like, mm -hmm. I mean, you've been doing jujitsu for a while now. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in life that you're still kind of like getting, mm -hmm. trying to push yourself in or like getting yeah. uncomfortable in any sense or? I mean, yeah, like, it's uncomfortable to to like fully go in and go 100% into soldier and yeah oh, yeah create a school yeah on the business end you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um and like what's to come how it's going to play out you yeah. know there's fears like in anything you know in any venture mm -hmm. so there is that like that doubt yeah yeah that you get yeah yeah but um yeah, doubt, fear, all that stuff. But that's the same lesson from jujitsu. It's like we have that doubt and fear of stepping into academy for the first time. Mm. But hey, if you just make a move, yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, and just show up Keep every day. Up. Yeah. Consistency is key. So yeah. you can't you can't fail with that. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you're failing, 
that's good and you can fail forward yeah yeah that's at good. least you're not just sitting back yeah wishing you should have done something right so yeah it's cool it's the same parallel in life mm -hmm. you know you gotta take a chance for me this is my chance my opportunity mm -hmm. to do it make a move and see where it goes i just feel like again it's it's a god thing i feel it's divine mm -hmm. that the people like you said all these cool people and you know i'm still scratching my head when everybody comes through sure you know yeah and uh the amount of talent and and all that stuff <laughs> <Fuck> you, <Dave. laughs> sorry i turned, no, I I turned my laptop I and ching. yeah i know sorry that's no, my that's bad cool. i just i had in my i was like bro i hope this thing's not dead but it also has all my other notes, so that's why I'm like, oh, I should check about what is kind it, of stuff. Is it good? Yeah, it seems like it. Um, no, but to your point, like that, mm -hmm. stepping into anything new, right, yeah. is like always like pretty nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, daunting. And daunting. Yeah, and you kind of have to overcome that. Just those initial, mm -hmm. um, just feelings of like being yeah. uncomfortable. But like, yeah. you, like you said, you keep showing up, and mm -hmm. it becomes more natural you start to guide i don't know develop that yeah um skill or even just like yeah. the other thought i had was like even if it doesn't get comfortable yeah if you keep showing up yeah like it's probably a good thing and you're building yeah. that like willpower mm -hmm. right that mental fortitude yeah i think that we talked about um yeah because yeah. i'm feeling like oh i don't know if i'll ever get used to podcasting and interviewing people but like are oh, you doing so good i'm trying yeah <laughs> like, oh. you have a great voice for no, podcasting no. Right, you have everybody the voice the voiceover <laughs> so voice <smooth>. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i just yeah. i'm like oh man if, even if i never get better at this i'm like i, I should still keep showing up and trying yeah definitely yeah like what's life if you're not you know doing new things and yeah. stepping out yeah um that cliche of like oh you don't grow in your comfort zone right like right yeah it's true and i feel it every freaking time i get on this mic and stuff so <laughs> um yeah no i'm 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 pretty sure we closed all, we covered a lot of stuff but do you have any i mean yeah there's are more thoughts that kind of pop up or mm. i see your brain thinking that's what yeah I'm like. i was thinking about that yeah um i mean that was a big thing doubt is a big thing because a lot of students doubt themselves mm. you know mm -hmm. um even in the beginnings mostly right like yeah yeah or like with competition you know oh dude that's and that's what's cool about when when somebody decides to compete mm -hmm. and they're just like nervous and doing all that and to see them like compete and then actually like execute things yeah. that yeah. you know they're they're like dumbfounded after they're like wow I, you know yeah I think that's that's such a cool win yeah like not not in a sense winning the tournament but like but for them or like for you too or just yeah, personally for, for, for whoever yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get so stoked when, you know, yeah. you're coaching somebody like pre tournament and you're like, yeah, you can, you can definitely do this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I would say pouring belief into somebody is, mm. is super, um, gratifying. Yeah. Because you can see the potential. And again, that's what I said in the video. Yeah, the, yeah. You can see them potential in them and, and by believing in them and, helping them to see that belief sometimes it can be hard mm. until they take a step out of their comfort zone and then do it mm -hmm. and then after they're like wow you know mm -hmm. like i can do it yeah and it, it is in life that i think that that helps them in life too For sure. you know yeah because it's like it puts you like you said it puts you in this uncomfortable position mm -hmm. and then you get out there and you do it and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I, I can do it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So that, that's, I think that that's where life lesson. confidence comes from is from doing those things that you think you can't do. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. you just, I, I, I went running for the first time, like in years, like oh, I don't wait. run a lot. Yeah, like I did yeah. it like last week Sick. and I've never ran more than like two miles at a time. Yeah. And like, I just decided, oh, I'm just gonna, I've been listening to a lot of Goggins, like David yeah. Goggins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go run and see what comes up as I'm running and like what thoughts pop up and how I can, or if I can like push through and just see what I do. Yeah. I ended up running like eight miles, Shut which up. is like the most I've 
ever run at once. Dude. And like, you know, I, I didn't, I was just like, all those thoughts that started to come up was like, just like yeah. wanting to quit, like that doubt, the like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I, this sucks. Like, yeah, it sucks, but yeah. keep going. And yeah. like, I just wanted to feel that like feeling. Yeah. And by the time I like finished, I was like, I got emotional, but I was like, oh my God, I never like ever done. Like, this is a place that I thought I could not get. Or like, I've always kind of had that thought of like, oh, I'm yeah. not a runner. I hate running. And yeah. And um, it's just like that feeling of pushing through something that you think you can't do. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu has that all the time where, yeah. you know, yeah, you're going up against, you know, someone and, and yeah. it's just like, oh, all yeah. those, those things start coming back again. But yeah. once you, you kind of push through that situation, it builds that kind of willpower, that mental fortitude, and you keep kind yeah. of coming back. And then you just, it's just like compounds. It feeds itself over and over again. And like that yeah. confidence just comes from not wanting to do something and then doing mm -hmm. it anyway. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that's so many good, good stuff has come from just training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you um, have hokas? <laughs> dude, no. <laughs> Bro, I messed my freaking home. Like I felt would like you, would you, would you wear vans? <laughs> Nobody told me I shouldn't have run that much at one time. Yeah. And uh yeah, I had like these crappy like Adidas from like Ross that I bought years ago. Oh shit. <laughs> and, like bro, bro, my knees like a couple of days later I couldn't walk up the stairs. I was like hobbling. I was like, oh, oh my god, this sucks. So yeah. yeah, I've learned my lesson there. And another lesson there. You learn from those yeah. situations. Like, well, I'm not gonna Next do time that, you're not yeah. going to do that. But you know, it's a good feeling still. I was yeah. like, oh, man, I'm, you felt confident. I felt like a little bit proud of myself. So You should be. Dang. Eight yeah. miles. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm inspired to run, too. Yeah. I got hokas for Christmas. Oh, it's sick. I there you to, go. I need to get out let's there. do a marathon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. We'll train this year and let's uh, go Tate. <laughs> let's see how it goes. Yeah, Tate too. He'll come with. Um Yeah. Is there anything, last thoughts, final things you'd want to say? I mean, obviously mm. Sojourn is opening up yeah. in like fully. Fully, yeah. I would say end of March. Mm -hmm. That's our that's our target goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah. And the whole team's just awesome. I mean, like, yeah. I know Kekoa is competing a lot. Yeah, Kekoa. He's um he got invited to fight to win. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's he been, did. Yeah, he he's been wanting to get on that. Sick, good for and, him. And uh, since next Saturday. Yeah. Oh, that's coming up. Out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll go watch that. So yeah, he's he's doing that, and I think the submission grappling event. Yeah. I mean, he's competing a lot. He yeah. loves it. Dude. And he trains like three times a day. Yeah. Or Crazy. At least twice. It's got to be a good feeling as a coach, to like. Oh, to feel, oh, I mean, like, yeah. not that you can take the credit. Obviously, he's yeah. incredible, but like, mm -hmm. to see again, like, someone you've poured life into, yeah, to just like take it and run, and yeah, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. How is I actually? That's something I wanted to ask you too before mm -hmm. we. I know we're going pretty long, but um, the idea of like pouring life mm -hmm. into people, yeah, right? Because I think another one of the lines in the film was like, "You're not just making good jujitsu players." Mm -hmm you're trying to build good people. Yeah. That's such yeah. a like profound, if you want to expand on like that kind yeah. of topic, like pouring life. Yeah. I mean, being a coach in jujitsu is one thing, you know, coaching technique and, uh, but it doesn't end on the mat. Mm. In my opinion, it's um, the relationships you build, mm. right? Those are true friendships and with Keikoa, I always saw him as uh, not like a, like a son because he was my son's friend, but like mm. you know, like a nephew for sure. Yeah, like family member, and um, I just have a heart for the kid, you know, and wanted to see him like succeed. So to be able to like pour into him would mean. And there's times he wanted to quit, mm -hmm. you know, he broke his wrist skateboarding. There's certain things that you do in life, you know, as a coach or as a friend. And and it's just, you're just speaking life into them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. encouraging them to keep going, mm -hmm. um, checking in on them too, yeah, you know, see how you're doing, yeah, um, guiding them in the right direction. You know, obviously, like, I helped him in the beginning, but... There's so much more coaches along the way, and now he's also at headquarters at Island. Mm -hmm. He's training with uh, Migs and and Raf, and all those guys are insane. 
and all the like Justin Porter. I mean, everybody, yeah. everybody there, the yeah. whole roster. Yeah, he's getting um, solid technique mm -hmm. and coaching from them, and that was the goal. The goal, the goal for me when I when I looked at like, oh, what would I want when the school is <clears throat> was to just have a program where somebody who didn't know any jujitsu could come, feel welcomed, mm -hmm. just start, you know, yeah. learn yeah. how to shrimp, learn basic <laughs> drills, yep. and then learn how to escape, you know, just basic stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then eventually somehow get them hooked <laughs> and then somehow they get confident mm -hmm. to be able to train anywhere. Yeah. And by seeing where Kiko is at right now, like that's um, that's awesome for me because that was my vision and goal for each person, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was always like um, I, you know, in karate, there's this phrase. Karate means open hand, mm. and it's basically that same concept that you know the students when they come in, it's not it's not this like mine. Mm. you know even sojourn is not like mine mm. you know anything you know is really not ours it's uh i have to like live live life with an open hand mm. and um like living that way coaching that way and having that um ingrained in me i know that people will pass and come through mm -hmm. and so when their journey comes through sojourn like I'm just there to like facilitate that mm. and where they go, they go. I don't like, I love when they go here and there and train, you know, I, I myself like to go other places to train or have other people come mm -hmm. with the, that whole jujitsu jiu aspect. But yeah. And in life in general, like we're nothing's forever. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, yeah. and uh, that's what sojourn is. Sojourn is a biblical word, Hebrew meaning a temporary stay. Temporary stay. Yeah. yeah. So if we look at that, um, like honestly, we're like we're only here in this life for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a breath, right? It's a whisper, right? Yeah, a whisper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So wow. um, with that being said, you know, why not invest your time in people mm. and try to pass on as much knowledge as you can and love as you can and so for me, you know, with all my background from pastoral ministry to jujitsu and all that stuff and life experiences, my goal is just to be able to speed the process up with people who are just starting out in 18, 20, even later in life, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it, man. Just walk alongside people and, yeah. and I get to not only walk alongside, I get to choke them out <laughs> <laughs> side control people. and get choked <laughs> oh yeah I choked out yeah. so good wow i mean yeah. i don't i can't think of a better way to end that than with that man um i think personally again like i just want to thank you because you've added so much to my life you know i've, yeah. I've i'm firsthand experience of you pouring life into someone yeah. um and i'm just I brought like thank you for doing that to so many other people. I think it's, it, uh, it goes a long way yeah. and it's very inspiring um, just to be able to, you know, again, mm. get to side control with you in life yeah. and other people. So that's super, super sick. Um, but yeah, you, if there's anything else, I mean, obviously yeah, Sojourn's going to be opening up in March. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, we can follow yeah, Sojourn Jiu work, Jitsu. Yeah. Sojourn Jiu Jitsu yeah. or Soldier and Soldier. Mm -hmm. um, on my Instagram. I mean, that's basically how we've been running. Yeah. <laughs> no website, but we're working on the back end. We're going to build a website Yeah, uh, and all the class schedules and, you know, we're it's, working like on an app and you can sure. sign up on all that stuff. You know? It's so, so sick trying though. Trying to get with the times. It's seeing, but seeing where it's at now, man, it's kind of special. Like, I like, it like, like oh this. man, it's so, yeah. it's like, yeah. yeah, if you're in, you're in kind of thing and it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's it's special. It's definitely yeah. in a unique place. It's just best yeah. people. Yeah. Um, and again, thank you for letting me do a film with you Dude, creating together, man. Thank oh, you, bro. Seriously. I'm sick. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked I'm so on honored, it. I'm honored, yeah. Um, if you guys haven't watched it, go check it out after this. Um, it's on my YouTube. Yeah. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys got something good out of this. But thanks again for tuning in to the Layers podcast. 
Thank you guys. I still haven't figured out like a sign off thing. I'm just saying peace out lately. But peace out. Peace like out. That. Yeah, peace whatever. Out. <laughs> peace out. Shoots. Shoots. Thank you. Yes. 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 Sir.